Alright, here we are again for another What the Hell is on my disc. And, uh, two discs today because, you know, why not? These ones look fairly straightforward. We've got one which has a label that says Axicon, an icon editor. Basic 2 for Gem. I don't have Gem desktop installed on here, so that might not work. And Windows 95 icons. And this one isn't a label made by myself, it's a PD label, I think. Why not personalise your PC? And you have to run it from DOS, apparently. Anyway, let's uh, dive in with the first of these discs, which is... Not that one, not that one, that one, disc 11. So this has got Axicon, Basic 2, Icons, and Readme.com. Uh, I never really look at the dates on these, but you can see here we've got uh, 8th of April 1996 is when I copied these across. Uh, let's have a look at Readme. Hello. <laughs> what the hell is this? This is clearly a program I've made myself. What the fuck? <laughs> it's hilarious. Anyway, after you have finished with the test disk, please format it low density and put a copy of Sys and TBUtil onto it. I seem to have another copy of the Ripper virus. Wait, is this something one of my friends made? It will do something this time, you never know. I'm the sort of person who gathers crowds. Maybe this time it will be viruses instead of my many, many fans. Strike any key when ready. Remember it costs £7.50 to join my fan club, but I wouldn't try if I were you because most of my fans don't like you. What the? <laughs> Remember the golden rule in computing, never type format C slash U and never type echo, Peter has a friend. Thank you for using the quality installation program by Microsoft. Remember, pay loads of money for our crap software and don't buy that quality produce from IBM. Yeah, I don't really... <laughs> <laughs> what that is or where that came from it was clearly a friend of mine made that oh, I don't know uh, anyway we've got a Axicon uh, what is this is oh, okay this is a self-extractor uh, okay self-extractor oh I should put this in a different directory no no I don't want these no oh, god all right all right let's we're going to have to make a new Axicon directory and Axicon to Axicon should probably work. There we go. Put it in a separate directory and then we can run that from Windows when we get to it. When we get to our friendly Windows environment. Because we all love Windows 3.11. I do. Anyway, uh, so we've got, uh, what was it, Basic 2? Basic 2. No, fuck, I've made the same mistake. Alright, I can't run that. That is a gem desktop application. I haven't got gem desktop at the moment. I have to make a mental log and come back to it. And icons. Let's make another directory in case this is an expander. Yeah, they got some icons there. Windows 90, I think these are Windows 95 icons for uh, Windows 3.11 because I was well into trying to make Windows 3.11 look like Windows 95 as you do type run me now dot bat all right this is a uh, let's just copy some DLL files to the Windows system directory so that we can run that program okay um, splendid let's just go to disk 12 because I think that will need to be ran from DOS and then run from Windows on the disk it says Press type start at the DOS prompt. All right, start. Oh God! What have you done? What is this? Why? Why have you? Why have you done this to me? Just why? Why have you put me in the C directory? Why? Why did you even? Alright, um, you probably have to install this in a specific directory. Let's have a look at the start.batch file and see if we can work out what's going on. Um, type terms, all the main files and dots of this book. Alright, alright, so it's just, okay, so it's moving to the um, root directory, so it's changing to root directory, and then trying to 
uh, list terms file, which it can't because it's moved away from the directory which that exists in. And then it's doing a directory listing with a W thing. All the main example files from the DOS section of this book are included on this disk. Uh, this was a book I had, I remember. This was a book called Why Not Personalize Your PC? And it came with these files. I remember! I remember! I can't remember what it did. What does DOS.bat do? That just does a directory listing. Clock on. Uh, clock on. No? Oh, it's put me back here. Right, okay. Clock on. Oh, I've got a DOS clock! I remember this! Blue Danube. Oh, is, is it playing a tune? We haven't got a tune. Uh, maybe it's the alarm tune is probably Blue Danube, but it puts an alarm in DOS. It puts a clock in DOS. That's pretty amazing. And that is the right time. Splendid. Uh, what else have we got? We've got curse on. Curse off. Turns the cursor off. Oh, that's a bit distracting. We also have shoes. Display the batch directory. Okay, so this is a this is for choose a menu system. You can choose stuff. Yeah. So this is for make a batch file utility for making menus. So you can like uh, run it at, in a batch file and specify programs, and it will run whatever program. I talked a bit a bit about one of these I made on my. Uh, batch file nostalgic discharge a while back if you want to find out more about that or not if we were to run menu one dot bat oh no it's fucking what's it done what is this screen one not found anyway let's I'll tell you what let's move on to the windows section of this disc and I'll boot to windows and we can talk again when we get there Okay, so here we are in Windows, and we need to go to disk 11, yeah, disk 11 first, so uh, we've got Axicon, which is extracted here, let's run it and find out what this little beauty does. Uh, so this is the icon editor, a shareware version, copy uh, un unregistered is permitted for evaluation. Let's try it. 1993 to 1994. Axialis. Alright, so, um, yeah, this is for creating icons and editing them. I think I used this quite a lot when I was making Visual Basic programs. We've got, um, Derek there. Alright, Derek. Yeah, I remember using these. We've got the globe. Yeah, we've got, what else have we got? We've got cartoons here. There's Bart. Shake your body, do the Batman. Oh, we've got some commercial programs. Common objects, data processing, games. What games have we got here? Oh, I've missed it completely. Nice one, dickhead. Here we go. Look at these games. Oh, I remember using these fonts for all sorts of things. We've got a Rubik Cube. Yes. Splendid. Microsoft Standard Fonts. Yep. And miscellaneous. Pepsi there. No Coke. Good, good. DOS prompt. Yeah, because you... I, oh, a pair of tits. Lovely job. You could <laughs> you could spend hours just configuring your icons, couldn't you? Fun times. And talking about icons, we have some icons here. Okay, do I need to open them? Okay, I think I can open them in Axicon. Have to go back in now. All right. All right, we've done this. Come on. Yeah, we get the idea. Version 1.1. Let us add an icon. Oh, yeah, I remember this. Little shareware countdown. Yep, lovely job, thank you. Uh, let's uh, add icons to the library. No, we've, no, we've done that. We, oh, every time I make a move, I'm going to have to endure this countdown. Transfer icon to editor. Uh, maybe I can just drag it across. Can you, uh, can you even do that in this? version of Windows. I don't think you can drag from one place to another, can you? But, but what is that called? That's O-L-E, isn't it? O-L-E. Let's see if that works under this version of Windows. So, no. Oh, yes! Oh, there it is! Yes, you can use O-L-E object. Licky, licky, ecstasy. Whatever it stands for. I can't remember. Object... 
or something. Uh, there's a Windows 95 computer. I think I use these programs to make a uh, Windows 95 style taskbar. Let's pop that one over and we have a trio of Windows 95 icon. That's not a Windows 95 icon is it? I don't even recognize that. Anyway, let's get out of Axicon and let's move on to... Oh God! No, I didn't want to save it. Get on with it. God, that's irritating. Number 12. All right, so let's see what Windows things we have. We've got a lot, not much. We've got Crater's screensaver, which will move across to the Windows directory so we can run it. We'll also move the log DLL while we're here. Yeah, we'll do that. We'll move that across and we'll have a look at... No, oh, fucking hell. Alright, we need to go back up here now, don't we? Navigation in Windows isn't great. It never was great. It still isn't great. If you use a Mac, the, nav the, the folder navigation is a lot better. That is one thing I can say about Macs. Let's move this. Let's... Can we copy this? Copy. <laughs> See, what the fuck is this? Copy to C Windows System. Now we've got, uh, interesting, replace, all right, no, we won't bother, we'll, we'll see if we can log this, we'll, log this, we'll see, <laughs> we'll see if we can, let's read, let's read the right file, see what it does, log off is a shareware exit procedure for Windows 3.1, which will exit Windows, restart, or reboot your computer, it, oh, so this is just to duplicate Windows 95 functionality again, isn't it, all right, if I run this, yeah, that looks very much like Windows 95. Very good. These programs were designed to mimic Windows 95. We, there was a, a lot of that about during the 90s. People trying to mimic the new uh, operating system. Because that's what you did if you were cool. Oh yeah, uh, craters. That's okay, this is the screensaver we got with it. Have a look at the... Uh, yep. Yeah. Alright, let's have a look. 3D craters. It's a bit like looking at Google Moon, just without the strange artifacts and strange numbers, which I made a video about a few weeks ago for some reason, on the moon, mainly because it interests me. Stuff like this. Not so much this, but, you know, things that happen. Strange things. Reset the terrain every 10 minutes. Well, there we go. There is a screensaver. Uh, oh, let's do it. What's that? Place icons. Hello. I did notice that on this version of Windows, I installed at some point. This isn't about the. This is a separate matter to the discs in hand. But I did notice that um, Zombie Wars. What the hell is that? I can't remember putting Zomb. What is that? Z War Dem. I can't run it. I don't even know where that came from. Uh, I did notice that there was a program group for ah this all the creative sound blaster stuff i think i might have put this on a while ago but do you remember this stuff i used to use this quite a lot you got this with the sound blaster cards and you have stuff like uh this it looks like a component hi-fi system we've got a wave player here and you can load something onto that if I remember not how how do you do that like that no like that that closes it oh my god no no I don't want that there we go this one okay so you can load stuff through here at uh, samples there we go there we go, we've got a nice car sound effect there, why not? And you also have uh, a MIDI player, creative MIDI, and oh, I used to love MIDI files because you couldn't get like proper music back then, it was, you know, with floppy disks and it wasn't internet, it wasn't really viable, so you could use just to stock up on MIDI files like this and listen to these tunes, here we go, let's play some. Oh yeah, blissful tunes. 
Welling away your uh, Saturday night here on uh, Radio 2 FM. Thanks for tuning in. Join us next week for some uh, blissed out tune. Let's go into the next fucking track. Alright. Of course, <laughs> the quality of the MIDI files depended very much on your sound card type. This is uh, replicating a Sound Blaster 16, so it has FM synthesis, which is very different to Wavetable. Wavetable is the actual instrument held in memory, and each you know, different each note is recreated in the chosen instrument in a bank, and then the MIDI fi 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 file calls the notes and it plays real instrument sounds. FM is uh, synthesized using chip mechanics, whatever you want to call it, to recreate the sound of the instrument. And I've always preferred the FM sound. It's just, it sounds more like computer music, doesn't it? You know, from the days of ZX Spectrum and C64s with chip, proper chip tune music, with the SID chips and the AY chips, and FM is just an extension of that. When you start putting real instrument sounds into it, it becomes more like a CD, which isn't quite computer music, is it? It's not as computery. We like the computery. Oh, yes. Anyway, this is... <laughs> this has got nothing to do with the discs, but... I thought you might uh, like to see this, anyway. And, yeah, that's about it. This marks the end of this round of what the hell is on my disc. Hello, hello. Of course, it's not going to work with this USB microphone because it's not compatible with this version of Windows. But anyway, thanks for watching this episode and I'll see you on the next one. Ta-ra for now. Alright, take a look at this, right? This is the most redundant thing in the world. This is the Creative Remote, and it provides you with a remote control up here, which allows you to control these over here. W why don't you just click the buttons here? What the fuck is the point in having these extra buttons to control these? There! Or is it if you're too lazy to move your mouse from there over to here? What, <laughs> what the hell?